how to change corporate culture, how to manage the risks, how to get uh, the super tanker that is often what large companies are uh, to turn. Right now, I think a lot about how do our customers innovate? How do we power innovation uh, by our customers? I think timing is extremely important. You can be too early and fail, and you can be too late and fail. You've got to not try to do it all yourself, and how do you leverage the world better to help you learn those things and to share that cost of risk. We actually never really had to think about others disrupting us because we were always thinking about disrupting ourselves. Xerox Park uh, is a legend in Silicon Valley. Uh, according to popular lore, you invented most of the internet. Uh, according to business lore, you failed to capitalize on it. Uh, you've got a fascinating perspective. Uh, and you've obviously learned some important lessons from that. Can you give us a sense of how a big organization can deal with disruptive threats? The hardest thing for people, particularly large organizations, is to accept that they have to cannibalize themselves, that you have to disrupt yourself. It's natural that it's hard, um, because if you're the big incumbent, you've got everything to lose, and the little guy, scrappy guy, has nothing to lose. Um, but one of the issues is, which risk are you going to take of somebody eating your lunch or you eating it yourself and finding out uh, you know, how to make a better dinner as a result? We're always too early, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> more often too early than too late, right? That's too actually the late. biggest well, problem I think big companies have. Large companies especially are very good at identifying the change, right, and identifying what the transitions are. I think oftentimes they fail in getting the timing wrong on when they should move and when they should place the big bet. And I think timing is extremely important. You can be too early and fail, and you can be too late and fail. We disrupt ourselves, and we do that through what we call spin-ins. We take our best engineers and allow them to go create a startup, and we invest in them, and when they hit some milestones, we buy them back. It's controversial. Um, because not all engineers can do that, of course, right? You know, so you would have two engineers, and one person goes to the startup, gets bought back, makes a, a lot more money than another engineer who's working inside the company. But if you look at from a whole company point of view, it's an excellent strategy, because mm. if they're going to leave anyway and create something, uh, if they're successful, they'll come back into the fold. I have a very small team. And we do not drive innovation at Pfizer. We just try to connect Pfizer to the external environment. So we have an open innovation platform. We try to connect to what's happening outside and making sure that the internal organization knows what's happening and, and making the right connection. Wait, so we're hearing uh, something extraordinary, right? At least in terms of the language that's being used to some of the great uh, companies uh, that have in the past been the leaders in innovation, a sense of humility, a sense that a lot of what's happening is not necessarily inside their own ivory towers, but happening outside in the world.